the gift that came itself there was greenery all around clothing mother earth as it were the interspersion of irrigation canals seemingly ornamenting the neck and waist line of shri bhuma devi the distant hills lined together and the cool breeze blowing from there were refreshing to the eye and the mind it was famed as the granary of madurai district an inexhaustible source of food grains a salubrious village to the west of the surabi river at such a village exuding prosperity the seed of ill will sown in the perspicacity of some bad elements had caused an unpleasant happening that was least expected there it was the winter of 1972 chillness pervading the atmosphere there but paradoxically even in such ambience the agrahara of that place experienced a hot wind blowing in the midnight in the violence that had erupted there and even before the cause for it could be known the attack had been launched and had ended too from that day the entire habitat was in panic not knowing where the assailants had come from and what their anim- animosity was due to it was an ancient brahmin settlement the residents there following the age old tradition of resting at night on the piles of their home for fresh air in an unearthly and eerie hour of the night savagery had been let loose there on an unsuspecting lot in deep slumber it was perhaps due to some antagonism of the past attributable to communi- communal discord religious differences or even political plotting that some persons who were not in a sober state of mind had entered the place and caused harm to the innocent ones sleeping in the privacy of their homes on account of this happening the residents of that colony were in constant terror and ever praying o oh god is there none to question the atrocities of these sinners will not some protection be afforded to us one and a half years had passed thus and in 1974 it was decided to observe shri raghavendra swami's aaradhana as was customary there from 1935 shri kupanna rao of that village was observing the festivity in his house on the madhya aaradhana day but in 1974 the public of the place eagerly came forward to celebrate the event as a common festival even after december 1972 when an outrage had been committed in the village the aaradhana of 1973 had been conducted uninterruptedly but in 1974 there was more interest evinced by the locals to commemorate the event on a grand scale in those days sri v s venkatraman rao the well known harikatha exponent was spreading raghavendra bhakti through his spell binding discourses during his visits to the village the public of the place were repeatedly apprising him of the barbarity unleashed on them shri venkatraman rao's wife belonged to that village and for the raghavendra aaradhana of 1974 he had been invited there to deliver a religious discourse during his harikatha on 6 8 1974 he delivered an inspiring message on the following lines dear devotees Shri Raghavendra Aaradhana has of course been taking place in this village since long but Shri Raghavendra should be made to cause his advent here for daily worship by all of you he was a universal saint beyond considerations like caste creed and religion always ready to grace everyone there are numerous instances revelatory of this in his life history if the public of this place should pray to him as one man circumstances conducive to the coexistence of diverse sects of people in this village and in the neighborhood will evolve for the peaceful and prosperous living of all beyond the bitterness and hatred that have left their embers still smoldering and to attain that state you should all endeavor from this moment to have shri raghavendra ensconced here 
Sri Guru Raja will undoubtedly bring success and good to all. The seed for the craving to get the Mrithika Vrindavana of Sri Raghavendra installed in their village was thus sown instantly in the hearts of the natives, such being the impact of his forceful talk that day. And immediately following the Aradhana, the elders of the place formed a Madhva Sangha there and decided to install a Mrithika Vrindavana of Sri Raghavendra Swami under its aegis. The Madhva Sangha thus started on 7-8-1974 was officially registered on 5-11-1974. Its name carrying the identity of the place of its founding. The establishment of the Madhva Sangha, it was expected, would lay the would lay the foundation for rooting out the problems of that fertile Kambam Valley village. The local residents solely prayed to Sri Harivayu, ensconced on the bank of the canal bordering the outskirts of the village, for a Raghavendra Brindavana to become a reality in their place. Incidentally, Sri Varadaraja and Sri Anchaneya, existing in the midst of green fields, presents an enchanting sight there. The Leelas of Vayuputra for the installation of his idol, Sri Anjaneya idol, through Sri Sumatindra are indeed spine tingling to know about. Madurai at that time was under the governance of Rani Mangamma. She was a very devout person, given to respecting and honoring the saints and learned pundits. In part 3, we have seen in detail about Rani Mangamma having presented to Sri Sumatindra a Vaikuntha Vasudeva idol, which still continues to be worshipped in Sri Raghavendra Mat, the principal one in Mantralaya, kept prominently in the puja setting of the Mat. Rani Mangamma, of such noble disposition, had to face distress once when her daughter fell sick and despite the best treatment administered by the palace physicians, continued to be unwell. When the Rani was in a confused state of mind, unable to decide what was to be done further, she learnt of Sri Sumatindra Tirtha touring around her place. And at once, she made necessary arrangements through her aides and received the pontiff at her palace with the due honours. She then had Padapuja of the Swami performed with bountiful offerings to the holy personage. Paying her obeisance to the Swami, she stood before him with folded hands, grief with writ large on her face. The palace physicians and other officials submitted to the Swami the condition of the ailing child. Sri Sumatindra, with a merciful look, took some sacred rice in his hand and chanting the Dhanvantri mantra in invocation of that deity, proffered that mantrakshata, which was at once placed on the head of the child. The healing effect of it was visible in just a day and year long. The child was completely rid of its illness. The Rani, in her exuberance, supplicated to the Swami to accept the customary honour offering him whatever he would desire to have. Sri Sumatindra at that time made it known to her that he would like to install some Anjaneya idols in her domain, just as he had done at Chitradurga, as guided by Sri Guru Raja, with the one which the Panchapandavas had worshipped in the Dwapara Yuga. The Rani then came forward to make arrangements for such Pratishtapana at three different places in her territory. The Anjaneya, thus installed by Sri Sumatindra, condescending to the prayer of Rani Mangamma, is proximate to the canal running near the village we have been seeing about. One of those three for the Pratishtapana of which Rani Mangamma had made arrangements during her period. The other two installed by Sri Sumatindra were at the periphery of uh, Vattira Irupu, Vattrap, and at Ganguvarpati, which also can be had darshan of in this region. 
after the institution of the madhva sangha in that village devotees started contributing their might for the divine cause and by word of mouth the earnest efforts of the public of that place spread to various corners enthusing the participation of a large number of devotees in the holy venture sri n ranga rao manufacturer of the cycle brand scented sticks in mysore donated a sizable amount for the sacred purpose he being a son of that village besides he also gifted the land on the eastern side of the now existing brindavana through a settlement deed much to the ecstasy of the raghavendra bhaktas shri kupanna rao postmaster of that place about whom we have known already made a benefaction to the madhva sangha of the land to the west and ultimately it was only the portion between those two lands that remained to be acquired by the madhva sangha for the installation of the brindavana and contiguity in its precincts the portion in the middle belonged to one krishna rao and the members thought that he could be approached to part with that land for the holy purpose on hand but the one hitch in the scheme was that a school was being run in that segment of the land however those at the helm of affairs took the bold decision that sri krishna rao could be approached to consider selling his land to the madhva sangha with a suggestion to have the school shifted elsewhere in a more spacious accommodation the proposal was then put forward tactfully to sri krishna rao with an indication that the madhva sangha had enough funds with it to have the sale registered at once sri krishna rao was of course agreeable to the proposal and soon the land was registered in favor of the madhva sangha thus the eastern side land the one to the west as also the middle portion were all available for the brindavana pratishthapana located as they were at the head of the agrahara soon a protective wall was raised enclosing the entire area about 6 years later a small enclosed space with the thatched roofing was constructed there to serve as a place of worship the members of the sangha thought that bhajans could be conducted there with a picture or idol of sri raghavendra kept there for worship it was suggested by a member that what the sangha president sri m v setu rao had in his house could be brought there and kept for puja of course there was unanimous approval for the proposal what was brought there will be unveiled in the next chapter and so also the identity of the village which has been kept thus far as a suspense to arouse the curiosity of the readers